Pupils Book, page 49, Activity 34. Listen and find. Then say. O. O. Pencil. O. O. Apple. O. O. Camel. O. O. Medal. Pupils Book, page 49, Activity 35. Listen and blend the sounds. 1. B. A. Ah. B. O. Bubble. 2. A. Uh, M. Mm, K. O. Uncle. Three. T. R. A. V. O. Travel. Four. A. K. R. O. April. Five. S. A. M. D. O. Z. Sandals. Six. T. Ow. W. O. Towel. Seven. P. U. O. Pupil. Eight. L. O. K. O. Local. Pupils Book, page 49, Activity 36. Read aloud, then listen and chant. Take your pencil, draw a camel, draw a medal. Draw some bubbles. Activity book, page 42. Activity 30. Listen and write. Take your pencil. Draw a camel. Draw a medal. Draw some bubbles. Pupils book, page 50. Activity 37. Listen and complete. Use the words from the box. 1. I like crisps, but popcorn is healthier. 2. Biscuits are delicious, but they've got lots of sugar in them. I'll have an apple. 3. I love donuts, but they're not very good for me. Yogurt is better. 4. I had some cake last night. Today, I want to have some carrots for a snack. Checkpoint. Units 1 to 3. Pupils book, page 53. Activity 2. Get ready. A. Complete the dialogue. Then listen and check. Social science is more interesting this year. Our new teacher is Miss Hart. What's she like? She's really nice. And she's funny too. Oh, I think I saw her. Has she got long blonde hair? No. That's Miss Roberts. Miss Hart's hair is shorter than Miss Roberts. And Miss Hart wears glasses. Interesting. When have you got social science? Every Tuesday and Thursday. Right now, we're learning about India. Miss Hart brought some Indian vegetable curry to class. Really? Was it good? Yeah, I loved it. Yesterday, we learned about Spain, and Miss Hart brought us paella.
Tomorrow we're going to learn about Italy. Miss Hart is going to bring pizza to class. That's fantastic. Can I come to your social science class tomorrow? Exam preparation, units one to three. Pupils book, page 56. Listening, part one. Listen and draw lines. There is one example. Did you do anything exciting at the weekend? Yes, I went to my cousin's wedding. It was so much fun. Look, here's a photo I took. Right. Oh, this is nice. Who's that? That's my cousin Paul. He took photos of everybody all day. His pictures are really good. Right. So, Paul was the photographer. That's right. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. One. The dancing was great. Everybody really enjoyed it. So, who's this? Who do you mean? The girl sitting under the table. Why is she there? Oh, that's Vicky with her book. She wasn't very happy because she had to wear a hat. Two. The food was delicious. I can see that. Who's that boy eating a big slice of pizza? He's sitting at the table wearing glasses. That's Jack. He really loves pizza, especially spicy pizza. Oh, me too. Three. There's Daisy. She's my best friend. She sits next to me at school. She and her sister are very good at music. Are they both singing? Yes, they are. OK, so which one is Daisy? Daisy's hair is shorter than Sally's. Right, and she's playing the guitar. Yes, she's very good. Four. Did everyone dance? Yes, we all had a lot of fun with our Uncle Bob. Here's Charlie. I think he was eating at the same time. Yes, he's holding something in his hand. Is it pizza? I think so. He's dancing with his pizza. <laughs> That's funny. Five. Who is the girl crying? That's Lily. She wanted to eat some ice cream, but there wasn't any. So we gave her some cake. But she didn't like it. Oh dear. Did she stop crying? Yes. We asked her about her doll and its pretty dress. Good. Unit 4. How do you feel? Pupils book, page 58. Activity 1. Listen, look and say. 1. Allergies. Two. Cough. Three. Fever. Four. Headache. Five. Cut. Six. Sneeze. Seven. Sore throat. Eight. Stomach ache. Nine. Cold. Ten. Toothache. Pupils book, page 58. Activity 2. Listen, find and say. I've got a bad cough. He's got a cut on his knee. I sneeze very often. 
He's got many allergies. My fever is high. He's got a terrible toothache. Her headache is very bad. I've got horrible stomach ache. I've got a sore throat. My cold is terrible. I need to sleep. Pupils book page 59. Activity 4. Listen and sing. Who's speaking? Stay in bed and rest song. <laughs> You're coughing and you're sneezing. You need to stay in bed. I think you've got a fever, here let me feel your head You shouldn't go to school today, you should stay home instead When you're ill or feeling blue Your family takes good care of you You've got a fever and a cold, here's what I suggest You should drink some tea and juice, stay in bed and rest Listen to your dad now, taking care of yourself is best. When you're ill or feeling blue, your family takes good care of you. Pupils book, page 59. Activity 4. Listen and sing. Stay in bed and rest song. Karaoke version. Activity book, page 47. Activity 3. Listen and write. Use the words from the box. Stay in bed and rest song. You're coughing and you're sneezing. You need to stay in bed. I think you've got a fever. Here, let me feel your head. You shouldn't go to school today, you should stay home instead. When you're ill or feeling blue, your family takes good care of you. You've got a fever and a cold, here's what I suggest. You should drink some tea and juice, stay in bed and rest. Listen to your dad now, taking care of yourself is best. Pupils book, pages 60 and 61. Activity 6. Listen and read. Does Christina need a nurse? You're hurt. Oh no! Sam and Christina are eating lunch together at school. Christina's got a problem. Oh no! You've got a cut! What? I... 
Sam gets upset when he sees Christina's arm. He thinks she cut herself. You should see the school nurse. You should put a plaster on that. But Sam... Sam wants to help Christina. You shouldn't wait. You should go straight away. But I... Christina doesn't need to go to the nurse. She's okay. Sam, it's only ketchup. I don't need a nurse. I just need a napkin. Christina cleans her arm. I thought that was blood. You shouldn't worry so much. Now Sam doesn't feel very well. Pupils book, page 62. Activity 8. Listen and look at the sentences. Help Sam and Christina make more. You should stay in bed. He should go to the doctor. We shouldn't go out. Activity book, page 49. Activity 7. Listen and stick. Number in order and write. Number 1. Hey, Mum. Are you ready to... Hey, what's wrong? You look terrible. Oh, sorry, Betty. I've got a really bad headache. I don't think I can take you shopping today. That's okay. You should get some rest. You look really tired. Thanks. Maybe I should take some medicine, too. Of course. Let me get some for you, Mum. Number two. I've got a sore throat and my body hurts. Oh, no. It looks like you've got a cold. Let me see if you've got a fever. Yep, you've got a fever. I feel terrible. You should eat some hot soup and get some rest. Number three. Hey, are you okay? That was a really bad fall. Yeah, I think. Ow. My arm hurts. You should go to the doctor. Yeah, that's a good idea. Can you help me with my bike? Of course. Let me take it. Number four. Are you okay? No. Ow. It's my tooth. It really hurts. Have you got a toothache? Yes, it started hurting last night. You should go to the dentist. Can you ask Mum to call the dentist for me? Ow! Okay. Pupils book, page 64. Activity 15. Listen and read. Check your answers in 14. Are your reasons the same or different? Germs Our bodies work hard to stay healthy, but there are many tiny enemies around us that can make us ill. They're called germs. We can't see germs with our eyes. We can only see them through a microscope. When they're inside us, they use our body's resources and take away our energy. Germs can cause fever, coughing, and other problems, so it's important to stay away from them as much as we can. There are four main kinds of germs. Bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. They live in different places, but they can all make us ill. Viruses are in the air. When we get a cough or a cold, it usually comes from a virus. The virus spreads through our bodies and then spreads to other people through the air. 
If you sneeze and you don't use a tissue, the virus goes into the air. This is why you shouldn't go to school with a bad cough or cold. Bacteria and fungi live in the air too, but they also grow on things such as old food. This is why we should keep food in the fridge. When we eat bad bacteria or fungi, we get stomach ache or we vomit. However, not all bacteria are bad. There are important bacteria in our stomachs too. We use them to digest our food. Protozoa can also give you stomach ache. Protozoa like wet places and can live in dirty water. This is why you should never drink water from a river or a lake. The disease malaria comes from protozoa. It lives in mosquitoes. How can we stay away from germs? Unfortunately, our homes are perfect places for them because there are lots of places to hide. How can we protect ourselves? We can try to be cleaner, but because we can't clean everything, we should wash our hands regularly and especially before we eat. Activity book, page 51. Activity 12. Listen, read and complete. When should we use tissues? About germs. We try to stay healthy, but there are tiny enemies all around us called germs. They're always there, but we can only see them with a microscope. Unfortunately, they can cause diseases. Where are germs? They're everywhere. In the air, on old food, in dirty water, and on everything we touch with our hands. The sink, the bath, our toothbrush, the TV remote control, and the computer keyboard. Kinds of germs There isn't just one kind of germ. There are at least four. Each one is a bit different. The main ones are bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. How do we protect ourselves? We can wash our hands often and keep the house clean. When we've got a cold or a cough, we should use tissues. Also, we should stay at home so our germs don't spread. Pupils Book, page 66, Activity 19. Listen and read. What does Mikey want to do? Mikey and Leo are brothers. It's three o'clock in the morning, and Leo is scared. Hey, Mikey, wake up. <clears throat> Leo? Mikey, listen. I can hear strange noises. Maybe we should wake Mum and Dad. Should we go downstairs? Should we call the police? Don't be silly. No, we shouldn't. Well, what should we do? What should you do, you mean? Well, first, you could stop shaking me. And second, you could let me sleep. And third, you could put that noisy cat outside. Then you could go back to sleep and be quiet. Pupils book, pages 68 and 69. Activity 28. Listen and read. Complete the sentences. Home remedies. Should you see a doctor every time you're ill? Of course not. Doctors haven't got a cure for everything. In fact, there are many simple illnesses that are difficult for doctors to cure. Sometimes people use different home remedies for them. The cold virus is one example. People in many countries don't take medicine for a cold. They make a big pot of hot chicken soup instead. They eat the soup 
and rest. Many people believe that chicken soup is a natural and healthy cure for a cold. And in fact, it really helps. Drinking a lot of water is good when you've got a cold. Also, the hot soup helps you breathe better and eases your sore throat. If you've got a headache, your doctor may give you painkillers. However, in China, it's common to cure a headache with an egg. You boil the egg, take off the shell and rub the egg on your face, head and neck until the egg becomes cool. Some people think this helps you sleep better too. Rubbing with the egg relaxes you, like a massage. Often, headaches are because of stress, so relaxing is a good idea. What about a fever? There are lots of different home remedies, but one interesting home remedy uses vinegar. In Russia, people rub vinegar into the skin. The vinegar makes your skin feel cooler and it can help lower your body temperature a little. One of the world's oldest home remedies is tea. You can use herbal teas for all sorts of simple illnesses, such as a stomach ache or a sore throat. Some popular ingredients in home remedy teas are mint, ginger, garlic, honey and lemon. All of these ingredients make a sore throat feel better and help you relax. Activity book, page 55. Activity 21. Listen, read and circle. Then write the correct remedy. Ginger is used around the world as a home remedy for many different problems. For example, many people take it when they've got stomach ache. In Japan, when children have got a cough, mothers give them a tea made from it. In Europe, people drink it in hot water with honey and lemon to help a sore throat. Garlic is also a common home remedy. In Spain, people add it to their tea to help with colds and coughs. Some Native Americans put it on bee stings. It helps stop the sting from hurting. Cinnamon is another common home remedy. Many people use it for colds. But did you know you can also use it for a toothache? Just mix some with honey and put it on the sore tooth. This not only helps the tooth hurt less, but also tastes delicious. Pupils book, page 71, activity 33. Listen, read and repeat. 1. Mm. 2. Er. 71. Activity 34. Listen and find. Then say. Er. Er. Right. N. N. Knee. Pupils book, page 71. Activity 35. Listen and blend the sounds. 1. Mm. Oh. No. 2. Er. Ah. Mm. Wrong. 3. Er. Ah. P. Rap. Four. N. Ah. K. Knock. Five. N. I. T. Night. Six. 
e r i s t wrist. Seven. N o t not. Eight. R e k r e k. Pupils' book, page seventy-one, activity thirty-six. Read aloud, then listen and chant. What's wrong, wrong, wrong? The knight knocked his knee, 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 and his wrist, wrist, wrist. I know. Wrap his knee and wrap his wrist. Activity book, page fifty-eight. Activity thirty. Listen and write. What's wrong, wrong, wrong? The knight knocked his knee, 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 and his wrist, wrist, wrist. I know. Wrap his knee and wrap his wrist. Pupils' book, page seventy-two, activity thirty-seven. Listen and say the letter. When you get ill. You don't want all your friends to get ill too. Here are some easy ways to stop passing germs to your friends. Just follow these simple rules. One. Sharing is great, but not when you're ill. Don't share your food, cups, straws, forks, or spoons with your friends when you're ill. Two. Don't cough or sneeze into your hands. Your hands touch many things. You should always cough or sneeze into the inside of your bent arm. That way, you won't get so many germs on your hands. Three. The most important way to stop passing germs is this: you should wash your hands with warm water and soap many times during the day. Always wash before you eat, and after you touch things in the classroom. Keeping your hands clean is a good way to stay healthy and stop passing germs. Unit five: Weird and wild animals. Pupils' book, page seventy-four, activity one. Listen, look, and say. One. Tasmanian devil lives in Australia. Population between ten thousand and twenty-five thousand. Two. Andean condor lives in South America. Population about ten thousand. Three. Anglerfish lives in oceans all over the world. Population, we don't know. Four. Volcano rabbit lives on volcanoes in Mexico. Population between two thousand. And twelve thousand. Five. Coconut crab lives on islands in the Pacific Ocean. Population more than one hundred thousand. Six. Tarsier lives in Southeast Asia. Population, we don't know. Pupils' book, page seventy-four, activity two. Listen, find, and say. There are about ten thousand Andean condors. Anglerfish 
live in oceans all over the world. There are more than 100,000 coconut crabs. Tarsiers live in Southeast Asia. There are between 10,000 and 25,000 Tasmanian devils. Volcano rabbits live on volcanoes in Mexico. Pupils book page 75, activity 4. Listen and sing. Why is it important to learn about animals? Understanding Animal Song Pupils book page 75, activity 4. Listen and sing. Understanding animal song. Karaoke version. Activity book, page 61. Activity 2. Listen and write, then draw. Understanding Animal Song.
Some live in trees or in the sea And some live where it's hot Some are beautiful and some are cute And some are well, they're not Understanding animals is good for us to do Because learning about animals helps us and helps them too It's important to learn about animals Though many seem strange, it's true Because when we Pupils book pages 76 and 77. Activity 6. Listen and read. What is the program about? Chimps are clever. Wow! Chimpanzees are amazing animals. They can talk to each other. Christina is watching a TV program about chimpanzees or chimps. She's telling Sam about them. They can climb trees and they know how to use tools too. Really? Christina explains that chimps make tools to get food. Oh no! That's sad! Chimps are endangered! Christina finds out that chimps are endangered. A hundred years ago, there were more than one million chimps. But now, there are only two hundred thousand. The programme says that there are not many chimps left. That's terrible. Why are they endangered? They're endangered because people are moving into their habitat. Christina explains that people move in and destroy the jungle and the chimps have nowhere to live. Christina, I can talk and climb trees, and I can use tools, just like chimps. I hope I'm not endangered. I don't think so, but you are a cheeky monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Sam laughs at Christina's joke. Pupils book, page 78, activity 8. Listen and look at the sentences. Help Sam and Christina make more. How many chimpanzees were there 100 years ago? There were more than one million. But now there are only about 200,000. Activity book, page 63. Activity 6. Listen and stick. Then write. 1. This website is so sad. It says how tigers are endangered. Why? How many tigers are there now? Today, there are fewer than 4,000. But in the 1990s, there were more than 100,000. I hope we can save them. Me too. 2. What are you reading about? I'm reading about black rhinos. They're endangered, and there are only between 5,000 and 6,000 black rhinos today. How many were there 100 years ago? There were about 100,000. People need to stop killing them, or they could go extinct. Yes, 
You're right. Three. What are you watching on TV? I'm watching a program about Asian elephants and how they're endangered. Oh, I saw that program. One hundred years ago, there were about ninety thousand. Right, but today there are only forty-five thousand. That's very sad. I hope we can help them. Baby elephants are so cute. Pupils' book, page eighty, activity fourteen. Listen and read. Match pictures A to D in thirteen to paragraphs one to four. Strange and endangered. Our world is beautiful, but it's changing. For some wild animals, nowhere is safe in nature anymore. Hunting and disease mean they've got no home. Let's meet some cute and unusual animals and find out why they're endangered. The smallest bat in the world is called the bumblebee bat because it's the same size as a bumblebee. Bumblebee bats live in caves in the forests of Thailand and Myanmar. They're endangered because each year farmers burn the forests where they live. Most scientists agree that there are only about six thousand bumblebee bats left in the wild. This funny-looking fish is called the Mexican walking fish. It's not really a fish; it's a kind of salamander. It's got legs so it can move around on land. It lives in the streams and ponds near Mexico City. But most of these ponds are now polluted, and the Mexican walking fish is nearly extinct. One cute endangered animal is the red panda. Most red pandas live in mountains in China, Myanmar, and Nepal. They live in trees with red moss on their branches, so they can hide from their predators. People hunt them for their fur. But they also fall into traps set by hunters. Scientists say that there are fewer than ten thousand red pandas left in the wild. The Egyptian tortoise is the smallest tortoise in the world. When fully grown, the Egyptian tortoise is only ten centimeters long. They live in the desert. They're so unusual. That everyone wants one as a pet. As a result, there are fewer than seven thousand five hundred left in the wild now. If we don't do something to protect these animals, they'll disappear. Then nothing will bring them back. Activity book, page sixty-five. Activity eleven. Listen, read, and complete. Which animals do people keep as pets? Status endangered. You can sometimes find bumblebee bats in caves in the forests of Myanmar and Thailand. However, there are now fewer than six thousand left in the wild, because farmers burn the trees where they live. Most red pandas live in China and the Himalayas. And they eat leaves. They hide in trees covered in red moss, so that predators don't see their beautiful red fur. They're endangered. There are now fewer than ten thousand, because people are destroying the bamboo forests. The Egyptian tortoise is very small. It's only ten centimeters long. That makes it the smallest of its kind in the world. Many scientists believe there are only seven thousand five hundred left in the wild now, because people keep them as pets. The Mexican walking fish lives on land and in water. It's called a fish, but it's really a type of salamander with small legs. Unfortunately, this strange fish is almost extinct. 
It lives in streams and ponds, but its habitats are mostly polluted now. Pupils book, page 82. Activity 18. Listen and read. Who took Ian's camera? Ian and Lisa are looking at photos. Look at my photos. From the trip to the safari park. This elephant is great. Could you touch them? No, we couldn't. But we were in a jeep, so we could go quite close. Look, these are the monkeys. They were really naughty. Naughty? Why? What did they do? I tried to take a photo, and they took my camera. I couldn't get it back. Where is it now? At home. A park ranger gave it to me later. Pupils book, pages 84 and 85. Activity 26. Listen and read. Say true or false. Correct the false sentences. Dragons. Dragons are mythical creatures. That means they aren't real. They're important in many cultures around the world. People from North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Oceania and Asia talk about them in myths and fairy tales. However, different cultures see dragons quite differently. In Asia, dragons are beautiful and magical creatures, and some stories about them are more than 4,000 years old. Asian dragons haven't got wings. They look like giant lizards, but they aren't scary. They help people, and they can bring someone good luck. One example is Fukuryu, the Japanese lucky dragon. In Europe, North America and South America, though, stories about dragons usually show them as evil. Western fairy tale dragons live in caves. They've got giant wings and breathe fire, so they're usually scary. However, there are some stories about good dragons in Western culture. Dragons also have a very long history in Australia and Oceania. Some of the dragon myths there are more than 50,000 years old. There are many different types of dragon, but the most famous of all is the bunyip. This scary mythical monster is made from parts of different animals. It lives in the water and eats animals and sometimes people. The only real dragon alive today is the Komodo dragon, a very large lizard that lives on an island in Indonesia. It can be scary because it hunts and eats almost anything – deer, pigs, other smaller dragons, and even big animals and humans. The Komodo dragon is now an endangered species because of predators and changes to its habitat, so people are trying to help save it from extinction. Activity book, page 69. Activity 22. Listen, read and circle. 1. Dragons in the West In North America and Europe, stories about dragons often show them as evil. They breathe fire and they've got giant wings. Dragons in Western stories are usually scary, but sometimes they're good. 2. Dragons in Asia In China, Japan and Korea, stories are usually about beautiful and magical dragons. They haven't got wings and they often help people. They're not scary or evil. 3. Dragons in Australia and Oceania One dragon in this part of the world is called a bunyip. In stories, the bunyip is scary. It's made of different parts of different animals. 
Four. The Komodo dragon of Indonesia. The only real dragon is the Komodo dragon. It's actually a large lizard. Komodo dragons are endangered. Pupils book page 87. Activity 31. Listen, read and repeat. 1. F. 2. W. Pupils book page 87. Activity 32. Listen and find. Then say. W. W. Whale. Phone. Pupils book page 87. Activity 33. Listen and blend the sounds. One. O. O. Photo. Two. Ah. Mm. T. Uh. Mm. Phantom. Three. W. E. T. Wheat. Four. D. O. Oh. L. F. I. Mm. Dolphin. Five. W. I. T. White. Six. E. L. A. Uh. F. A. Uh. N. T. Elephant. Seven. W. E. O. Wheel. Eight. W. E. N. When. Pupils book page 87. Activity 34. Read aloud, then listen and chant. The phantom's got a photo on his phone of a white wheel and some wheat. Activity book, page 72. Activity 31. Listen and write. The phantom's got a photo on his phone of a white wheel and some wheat. Pupils book, page 88. Activity 35. Listen and say the letter. Match the sentences in the box to the correct pictures. There are many ways to take care of animals around us. In fact, anyone can do it, even you. Here are three simple things that you can do to help protect the wildlife around us. 1. Plant a tree put up a bird feeder, or build a bat house. There are lots of little things you can do to make the space around your home a better place for wildlife to live. 2. One thing that anyone can do to help animals, including people, is to follow the simple rule of reduce, reuse, recycle. 3. Don't pollute the environment. Be sure to throw your rubbish away in the correct place. Never throw it in streams, rivers, lakes or the sea.